The following may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Autopsy of drowned toddler Romelu Amani Drakes moved to POS. The autopsy on little Romelu Amani Drakes, who drowned in a pool at his Kuva school earlier this week, has been shifted to the Forensic Science Center St. James for next week. On Wednesday, his parents were told the autopsy would have been done at the San Fernando mortuary yesterday to accommodate COVID-19 testing. When they arrived yesterday, however, they were told that their son's body was being taken to the FSC. A senior police officer said the decision was taken to have the autopsy done at the FSC for safety. Romelu's mother, Regine Phillips, dropped him off at the Ethel Speech Therapy School for Children in Coover around 9 a.m. on Tuesday and went to work. When her sister went to pick him up around 12.15 p.m., she was kept waiting for about 15 minutes. She was then called inside and told that he fell into the pool and they tried to resuscitate him. The aunt, accompanied by the school's owner, Alicia Barrett, took the unconscious child to the Coover District Health Facility. He was pronounced dead at 2.50 p.m. The entrance to the above-ground pool from the schoolyard is through a ply gate. Romelu, who had been attending the school for the past eight months, would have turned three on April 23rd. The special needs school, which reportedly has a student population of 18, is neither registered nor affiliated with the Ministry of Education, Minister Ryan Gatsby Dolly said in a statement on Thursday. In addition, all schools remain closed under COVID-19 protocols and only secondary school students preparing for certain exams are currently being allowed in-person schooling. The school has not reopened since the incident. Romulo's father, Shion Drakes, said no explanation was given to them about why the autopsy now has to be done at the FSC. He has neither been contacted by the school officials nor the police investigating his son's death. Coover police and homicide investigators are involved in the investigation. Do you think the operators of the school should be charged for negligent homicide and operating an illegal school? Or do you think the prosecutor will decline to prosecute? Family prays for boy missing at sea. Matthew, oh God, I know he is dead, but I want him, God. Those words of sorrow were among the few Bagmani Suku bellowed as relatives sapped her head with Alcolado Glacial and tried to comfort her. Like her son Marlon and other relatives, she anxiously waited along Fullerton Beach Cedros yesterday, hoping for her grandson Matthew Suku to return. There was no false sense of hope for the Suku family after the 14-year-old teenager fell out of a fishing pirogue on Saturday and disappeared underwater. Marlon Suku, the boy's father, who was also a fisherman, told Guardian Media that all his family wants now is closure. I just want to see we get him back so his mommy could be pleased. She already knows he's gone, Marlon said. Matthew's mother, Shanti, could barely utter a word as she stared at the sea, hoping to see her boy. Marlon recalls seeing Matthew ten minutes before he disappeared, explaining that a group of villagers were out testing his cousin's new pirogue. He said they did a test run with two engines and returned to shore to remove one. Set to do another test using one engine, Matthew asked to accompany the group. However, Marlon told him that he could not go unless he, Marlon, or their cousin was there. I was there on the shore talking to the fellas, and when I looked back, I saw him pulling the anchor. I did not know he was going. 
Marlin said his son usually gets everything he wants, so he just went ahead. Even as they left, he was not worried as Matthew had gone to the sea many times. He admitted that they did not use life jackets. While Matthew knew how to swim, Marlin's information was that his son struck the propeller and probably fell unconscious. The family spent the night at the beach hoping that Matthew's body would wash ashore. One occupant of the ill fated trip explained that it was a tradition for the villagers to test new vessels. He said there were six people on the pirogue when the captain lost control. The boat ended up making a turn. It started to spin, and one of the young boys fell off the boat without any of us knowing because everyone got lashed. The impact caused everyone to fall. When the boat got out of control, the engine was still going. The first spin the boat made, the boy fell over. He said everyone fell inside the boat except for Matthew. Two men suffered blows to their heads while his injuries were minor. He said the accident was not about an inexperienced captain as speed, sudden waves, or slipping on gas can can cause someone to lose control. The Coast Guard deployed vessels and helicopter yesterday in the search, which was difficult because of the sea condition. Marlin said they postponed the search until 3 30 p.m. They hoped that 24 hours after Matthew entered the water, his body would resurface. Driver crashes car trying to avoid roadblock. One man is in police custody after he tried to avoid a roadblock and crashed his car in the process. Police said members of the Port of Spain Task Force set up a roadblock near Independence Square on Friday night when they saw a car reversing. The car crashed into another car behind it and sped off Piccadilly Street before crashing into a pavement near William H. Scott Hardware. The driver was not injured. Police searched the car and said the driver tried to avoid the roadblock because he did not have a license or certificate of insurance. He was arrested and is expected to be charged. The exercise was conducted by Superintendent Ramnarin. Inspector Knott, Sergeant Alexander, Corporals Suku, Thomas, Duncan, and St. Bernard. Sangre Grande Man Killed by Relative in Family Dispute. Police officers have arrested a relative who they believe shot a father of one in front of his family at his El Carmen Street Foster Road Sangre Grande home on Sunday morning. Kendall Williams, 26, an electrician, succumbed to his injuries at the Sangre Grande Hospital. Police report that around 5 a.m. on Sunday, Kendall came out of his house and saw a relative arguing with his father. The relative then turned and shot Kendall, who ran a short distance before collapsing in a nearby shed. The victim's father, Paul Williams, said the relative threatened to kill him, Kendall, and other family members. After he destroyed plants in Kendall's garden but refused to apologize. He said the suspect even assaulted his own mother, who was forced to flee the area. The elder William said the suspect attempted to fight him, but when Kendall heard the commotion and came out, he turned the gun on him instead. He added that his son's wife is pregnant with their second child, and his murder has left her traumatized and distraught. Police officers arrested the suspect soon after the incident as he was making his getaway in a car.